One thing that a lot of churches and ministry organizations don't ever consider when it comes to outreach is TV commercials on a local television station. Now, that that sounds expensive. It sounds out of whack. It doesn't sound like something most churches would be interested in. But I'm going to tell you something. I know churches, and we've worked with hundreds of churches around the country over the years, that have had remarkable, remarkable results doing local television commercials. Now, many churches have done radio spots. Some have done newspaper ads and things like that, billboards maybe in the community. But I want to talk today on this episode about television spots for your church, your ministry, your nonprofit, and how it can make a dramatic difference difference in the way you're perceived and the outreach you have in your community. Over the years, we've had an enormous number of pastors, ministry leaders, nonprofit leaders call us here at Cook Media Group to ask us about television commercials. You know, from time to time, some bold Christian organization, it may be focused on the family, it may be the Jesus Film Project or some other group, will try to do television commercials in a national space. A number of years ago, Focus on the Family did a television commercial with Tim Tebow during the Super Bowl. You may remember that. I know the International Mission Board for the Southern Baptist has been advertising on Fox, leading the way ministries with Michael Youssef has been advertising on Fox News, and many others are doing similar advertising. And so churches see that, pastors see it, and they ask me, is it wor- does it work? And how to go about doing it? So let me ask you, let, let me answer some questions for you, because I think it's important. First of all, local television in most markets in America is not terribly expensive. In fact, it's extremely affordable for a lot of churches out there. Uh, I live in Los Angeles, so obviously TV time here is pretty expensive, as it would be in New York or maybe Atlanta or Chicago. But in most medium sized cities across the country, television markets are extremely affordable to get into with 30 second or 60 second spots. Now, a lot of ministry leaders want to talk about doing a full length television program. And of course, that's great. I'm all for that. I think that's fantastic. However, there's a real opportunity to use spots. And I'll tell you why. You can place a spot during an extraordinarily popular television program, which means A lot more people will see it than would ever see it if you were doing Sunday morning television or if you were doing on a Christian channel or some other place. That's not to say those those types of programs don't have a place. However, you can can reach an enormous, an enormous number of people with well-placed television commercials. For instance, I had a pastor we worked with in Indiana many years ago who had a real heart to reach men. So he would do a series of commercials that were kind of oriented toward reaching men. For instance, he'd put a hard hat on, go to a construction site and do a 30 second spot about the importance of rebuilding your life. And it was all to encourage people to come and visit his church. If their life needs to be rebuilt, they can do it at his church. And I've done, we've done commercials for local churches and hospital emergency rooms. We've done them in surgical suites. We've done them at minor league ballparks. Depending on the audience you reach, you want to reach, and depending on what you want to say and what you want to do, you could do some very interesting spots. And let me just say, this pastor in Indiana that was doing these spots to reach men, he would broadcast that during the network news in the evening. Now, let me tell you, he was probably reaching more people through a 30-second television commercial on the evening news than all of the Christian channels in his area combined were reaching. So if you're thinking in terms of trying to make an impact to a big group, a lot of people, a 30 to a 60-second TV spot is really an interesting way to go. And so the question becomes, how do we start? What do we do? Well, first of all, I recommend we think about who's the audience we want to reach. Now, you've probably, if you've listened to this podcast much, you've heard me talk about, you know, every church thinks they can reach everybody. Well, let me tell you, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm recalling stories about the apostles who couldn't reach everybody. They went into towns. Jesus said, when you go into a town and people aren't interested in your message, just shake the dust off your feet and move on. Well, let me tell you, if, if the apostles couldn't get people to listen to the message, even Jesus was thrown out of his own hometown. Um, they almost threw him over a cliff, if you recall. Um, if Jesus can't even get people's attention, we're not going to reach everybody. So the question becomes, who are the people your church is most likely to reach with your teaching, your style of worship, the kind of people that are coming to your church already, the location it's in, all of those things. I like to sit and first talk about who are the kind of people that would most likely want to come and visit our church? And that's where I start. And I find programs that would reflect that. Now, Andy Stanley in, in Atlanta, Georgia, is fa- at North Point, is famous for buying commercial time around Saturday Night Live because he wants to reach a younger audience. Other pastors I know are airing their, their commercials during sports programming, or they're airing it during daytime talk programming. 
it depends on the audience you want to reach. So that dictates where you want to air the commercial. And I think that's really important. Targeting that audience is absolutely critical. The second, the second question I always ask is, do you want to reach Christians or do you want to reach non-believers? Now, uh, yeah, I, 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 we may think, we may nobly think, you know, we always want to reach non-believers. Well, that's not always the case. There's a lot of Christians out there that are looking for a church home. There's a lot of Christians that would be more likely to immediately respond than a non-believer. There's a lot of Christians out there that might need to come and visit your church for a lot of different reasons and are looking for a better place to worship. So think of, it's not just for non-believers. You may want to do a series that's really geared towards Christians. So the question becomes, what are they watching? Let's put our commercial on places where Christians might be watching. You might find an extremely popular television ministry on the air. And whether you agree with them theologically or not, if they're bringing a lot of eyeballs to the table, if a lot of people are watching, maybe you want to be before and after, by that time, before and after one of those programs. Or it just could be a family-oriented program, something else. I had a client advertising a lot on the Hallmark Channel. Those kind of places or where a family might be and where a lot of Christians would be watching. So that's that. Then if you want to reach non-believers, that's something entirely different. You might want to be on the Saturday Night Lives of the world, the sports programs of the world, the secular talk shows. You might want to be where more non-believers might be watching television. So I'd encourage you, sit down first and answer those questions. Think about who you want to reach, who's our likely target audience. I think that's critically important. And then we have to ask, what's the length? Now, here's the philosophy in the advertising world. In most, when you're unveiling a new product, most advertisers, if, they're, if you haven't heard about their product, if the general public hasn't heard, they like to go with longer spots. Direct response commercials now, those, those commercials for, you know, where they want you to call right now and buy right now can be 90 seconds to two minutes long. But most new product commercials that are introduced can be up to 60 minutes long. And that's because it's a new thing. Nobody knows who you are. It takes a little longer to explain what you're all about, and why they should respond or what they should do, whatever it is you want them to do. So think in terms of maybe starting for a few weeks or maybe months with 60 second commercials. Then you can either cut those down or shoot a series of commercials that would be 30 seconds in length, because that's ultimately all you need, because you're really trying to plant the idea in their mind. Whatever that idea might be, it might be to accept Christ, it might be to come visit your church. Um, I have to say that I'm not really big on salvation-driven TV commercials. I don't know that if I'm sitting there at home um, having dinner and watching the evening news, and a commercial comes on that encourages me to accept Christ... I don't know if I'm going to make that decision within 30 seconds during the evening news having dinner. It's just a, just a behavioral thing. Answering a bigger question might be, we just want to plant a seed in their mind. We just want to plant a seed and maybe they start thinking a different way. I think that's a really critical thing too. So understand that and, and then really focus your spots on that. Now, when it comes to producing the spots... I don't think, now, I, I, you know me, I'm all for creativity. I've done a lot of blog posts um, and a lot of podcasts on creativity. But I think when you're first starting out, I'd probably encourage the pastor to be the host of the spot for a couple reasons. Number one, I want people to get to know who that person is, who that pastor is. Um, put the pastor as the host of the commercial just so that name recognition gets out there and people start knowing who your pastor is. Plus, I think an on-camera host can probably, in a 30-second frame, explain it better, plant that seed more effectively, and can do some remarkable things. So when it comes to just introducing people to your church or your ministry or your nonprofit, the pastor, the executive director, the leader, the founder, whoever, I would encourage you to consider putting them as the host of the spot. From that point on, once people know who the pastor is or the leader is, then you can start doing spots down the road that maybe are more creative and start doing some really innovative, interesting things. So I'm, I'm saying all this, just this is kind of a short podcast today, but I'm saying all this because I think it's really important that as a church, even a local church, even a relatively small church in a community, think seriously about doing broadcast television commercials. Now, you could experiment and try by placing those commercials on Facebook. You could buy, you know, you, you can do uh, 
buy posts on Facebook where you and Instagram and other places where you could put the commercial there, see what the response might be. But eventually, I think you ought to try to think about local broadcast television. It's a huge medium. As I've said many times before, broadcast television is not dead and it's not going away anytime soon. So I would encourage you to think seriously about how to use short television commercials in a way to get the name out about your church, your ministry, your nonprofit, and reach a ton of people in your community. Broadcast commercials really do work. Thanks for watching. I'm, I, again, I really appreciate you talking about these things, sharing. Give me comments. Uh, give, rate us, please. Share us with friends. If you have pastors or leaders in ministries or nonprofits that need to hear this message, get it out there to them. Share it with them and recommend it. We really appreciate your support because it makes a huge difference. And don't forget my new book, Maximize Your Influence. How to make digital media work for you, your church, your ministry, your life. You, I mean, it's, it's a compendium, a reference of how to get you to understand the power of digital media. And if you're a leader, you need to have this book on your desk. So I'd encourage you, go get the book, Maximize Your Influence. Thanks for watching.